Good news, guys. The USL Championship is not going to be using pro referees in 2023. Or so we thought. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or whatever time you're watching this video. Welcome to another RGBFC news and rumors segment for the Down in the Valley podcast. My name is Edson Ochoa, one of the co-hosts of the podcast. And man, I can't believe it's only been two days since I last uploaded a video. And now I have to come back and talk about more RGBFC and USL related stuff uh, for you all today. First, let's add some more transactions into the Toros transfer tracker. On Monday night, right at, after I had uploaded my video, uh, could not have come at a worse time, um, just channeling my inner Richard Childress here. Uh, I was notified in the Stampede chat that there was an Instagram post that could potentially put to rest any probabilities of a key player from last season from making his return to the Toros in 2023. The account at Indy underscore 11 underscore designs posted a graphic of Jonas Fielberg in an Indy 11 kit stating, with a new season comes an old friend. Welcome back, Fielberg. This announcement is not surprising considering that, if y'all remember, Jonas came back to the Toros on a loan trade with Indy 11 for Jesus Vasquez. In the 2022 season with RGV, Spielberg scored six goals and accumulated one assist in 11 games, making him one of the most uh, impactful players for the Toros offense alongside Christian Pinzon and was key to making back-to-back -back, uh, playoff appearances in the USL Championship. With the loan ending at the end of the season, Spielberg was responsible for reporting back with Indy 11 at, at its end. However, there were some rumors about apparent interest from the Toros to acquire the Norwegian forward for 2023. However, I'm assuming that part of the reason it didn't happen is that according to transfer market, Fielberg's market value rose 50%, reaching $150,000, which probably made it very difficult for RGV to make a uh, a formal offer to Indy 11 for the player. However, a player that is coming back to the Rio Grande Valley is defender Robert Coronado, as announced by the club just a couple of hours ago as of this recording. While he did not have many minutes in 2022, Robert did accumulate four goals playing as a midfielder. His natural position, according to our interview with him back in 2020. Robert is also a club veteran, which, uh, if y'all remember, he made his professional debut with the Toros back in the 2019 season. He is currently the longest tenured player in RGVSC history, as he will be making his fourth season with the club in 2023. In the announcement, the Toros also confirmed that Rob Kaur will be the last player from the 2022 roster that will return for 2023. This means that players like Isidro Martinez, Juan Pablo Torres, and Colin Miller, among others, are now out of the club. Now we'll just have to wait and see which new players will be announced by RGV FC in the upcoming weeks. Now, there are two stories that I also want to discuss today, and the reason I'm bringing them up is that they could potentially affect the USL Championship as a whole. The first story, like I teased in the beginning of the video, is a rumor that spread throughout USL Twitter about the USL not using pro referees, at least for the 2023 season. Now, 
before y'all start celebrating uh, about the about this, let me go ahead and mention the facts of what we know so far about the, the this particular issue. On December 28th, 2022, the Northern Guard, the supporters group for Detroit City FC, posted on Twitter a leaked memo from the Professional Soccer Referees Association Board, or PSRA for short, that stated that the USL had decided that its leagues will not be served by pro in 2023 and that the USL did not want to pay the training expenses that pro was pro, pro, pro I can't English that pro was proposing in addition to the administrative expenses pro might incur in administering the refereeing of USL matches. Fast forward to January 6 of this year Keith Hickson of the Pyramid Soccer News confirmed the legitimacy of the email or the memo mentioning that multiple referees who reached out to him under anonymity mentioned that they did receive the same email that was being circulated on social media. Hickson also reached out to Will Coons, USL Senior Vice President of Communications and Public Relations, who confirmed that despite the memo stating otherwise, the USL had not reached a final decision regarding the, the subject and continuously added that the league is still in discussions with PSRA, US Soccer, and Pro for the officiating for 2023. So what happens if these talks between uh, these entities break down before the, the, the beginning of the USL championship season. Well, according to the same article by Hickson, US Soc the US Soccer Federation, who oversees its own network of certified referee assigners, would be a good alternative for the USL, especially if you consider the fact that all American referees, despite if they're affiliated with pro referees or not, must be certified by US Soccer. It also wouldn't be the first time that the USL would use the uh, US Soccer Federation to assign referees as they had previously used them before 2012, which was the year that Pro was created. So um, basically, they are going to have some, some options. And as well, I mean, you also have NISA who currently use US Soccer as referee assigners. Now, Hickson also finalized the article saying that various sources indicated that they expect talks at the end of January on this issue, but neither the USL nor pro referees could confirm a date. So it's pretty much a waiting game uh, a, regarding this, this decision. Like I said, I don't think we're going to be, I don't, I don't think USL is going to be kind of, um, rushing, you know, and just grabbing anybody. The question is always going to be, you know, what the level of refereeing is going to be without pro. I mean, the bar was kind of set real low with pro anyway. So, uh, I don't think even if we do go with the U S soccer, I don't think it's going to be uh, the, uh, the big of a difference because, in fact, uh, stated in this article, some of the referees that are assigned by U.S. Soccer are also involved with pro. So it really won't be that much of a difference. But moving on, another currently relevant story uh, and the last one for today is the media rights agreement between the USL and ESPN or the lack thereof in, the, uh, in this case. Now, Keep in mind that the last agreement between both entities was announced in 2019 and had a duration of three years, which means that that agreement uh, ended after the 2022 season back in November. After the USL announced the, the season schedule earlier this week, a lot of fans noticed that unlike in previous years, the USL made no mention of the ESPN schedule, basically, uh, the games throughout the season that will be sh that would be shown on uh, cable ESPN and not on ESPN Plus. So because of that, a lot of these fans became worried about where the matches would be available for streaming, especially if you take into consideration that now you've got players like Apple TV who just got MLS, uh, HBO Max who just got uh, the US Soccer, 
and, and, and all these different streaming services that are starting to swoop up, you know, uh, professional soccer for, for their ranks. So there's, there's a lot of uh, questions about what's going to happen in the future. However, Philip Grooms, who is a former host of the Beautiful Game Network's The USL Show, tweeted out that, according to his sources, the ESPN deal with the USL is a done deal, and it's good to go for this upcoming season. Hopefully, while we don't know what the terms uh, are of that uh, potential agreement are, hopefully that gives the fans some calm while the league prefers, prepares the official statement of the new agreement in the, in the next couple of weeks. But anyway, that's all I have for you today. Share your thoughts with me below. What do you guys think of the return of Robert Coronado? What do you guys think about the situation between the USL and pro referees? Do you believe that maybe it might be a turn for the better? You know, not being affiliated with uh, with pro referees and MLS. Uh, or what are your thoughts on, on the potential um, the, the the potential return of ESPN uh, to streaming the the USL games, whether it's uh, the Championship or USL League One? Uh, put the put your thoughts down in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching and supporting the Down in the Valley podcast. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that like button and be sure to subscribe to the channel as well so you won't miss any RGVFC news and discussions. By the way, we are going to be back with our podcast next week live right here on the Down in the Valley podcast YouTube channel. Have a good night.